Hi people, and welcome to the Gary's Mod Bible of myself. In this video, I will be teaching you, as well as boring you, with tons of talking that will somehow make sense to a certain number of people. If you're here for another production, then this video is certainly not for you. However, if you're here because A. You're curious, B. You have nothing else better to do with your life, C. You actually want to try and learn something, or D. Have no idea what Gary's Mod is, then you got the right idea. So try and bear with me while I show you how I make my own videos. Before we get started, I just want to say that everything I will go over is how I make my videos. Now there's endless other ways to make videos, and my way, I know, is certainly not for everyone, but if you're up to it, nobody's stopping you. Now, usually what gives inspiration, obviously, is something that interests you. Let's say you like slamming your ball sack on a toilet seat. You wouldn't want to slam it on a sledgehammer instead, now would you? Of course not. Inspiration could come from everywhere at any time. Always look at things constructively. You can look at anything, whether it be an object, a person, an event, and ask yourself, what if? Once you start with a basic idea, add on to it. What is the reason for it, blah, to happen? What makes a good plot is good reason. Not saying I'm a pronounced professional at making the most reasonable and sensible productions, but you get the picture. But when you're just starting out, start small. Never start with huge projects because you can work and work and work on it and half the time you might not even know what the hell you're doing and once it goes to shit, you just wasted your life working on something that wouldn't ever be finished, stupid piece of shit. Okay, so got this guy. This was a piece of- No! <laughs> okay, so we have this like slice of pizza that's fucking taking a shit. So, we can get that guy from that video game, you know, he's gonna be eating the pizza, and then have, like, motherfucking Ant-Man come in and fucking, like, team it up with him and the pizza as he's eating it to save the motherfucking world, and then- <laughs> Oh my god! That is so funny! There's, like, a guy, and oh, shit, and- Oh, I'm over the oh place! Oh my god! Pizza. William Shatner! So after thinking about your idea for some time, <laughs> it's time to write all that shit down! You don't have to write down every little thing! That lets you leave space for improv. What's improv? Improv is when you don't have an exact idea to do a certain thing, so you make it up as you go along. Let's use my ancient video of the random tales of G-Man, for instance. All I did was write down the narration. I didn't write what I would represent in G-Mod, that was all improv. Which is why it's good to write only what's necessary when jotting down ideas. <laughs> Writing a script is just so much fun! Well, if you're a good writer, that is. If not, you might struggle, but don't think about it too hard. This is the time when you place your ideas in order, from when and where in the production you would like to use those ideas. First off, if you're gonna have dialogue and separate characters, make a cast list. Who will voice them? A script is kind of like a story, only it doesn't have to go into intense detail about every single little freaking thing you want in the scene. A basic script layout I suggest is placing the key events in little parentheses, before or after dialogue. You don't have to add these events after every spoken sentence, but only when you want it to happen. It's your script, write it however the fuck you want! Ow. Oh my god. This is the last straw. Stay golden, Pony Boy Curtis. Uh. Voice acting is only optional. You don't need custom voice work to make a good video. However, if you want to voice act, there's a couple things you must keep in mind. First, get a decent microphone. Swing on over to Best Buy and get something that fits your standards. Do you want professional studio quality? Do you lack a job and can only afford a cheap but acceptable one? It's all up to you. The mic I use is this little shit mic, and I've had this thing for years. 
Still works like a charm, though, which is a mystery to me even to this day. When you commence voice acting, find a private place to record. Close the door of your room, since it cancels out background noise, or do it in your car if you have one. If not, then I don't know. Also, turn your fan off if you have one, as it can create noise in the mic, too. Go get a bottle of water and get comfy. If you want to sound decent, emphasize, but only when necessary. Put yourself in the character's shoes. Speak loud and clear. Like if you're presenting your project in school, except you don't get erasers thrown at you for them assholes in the back of the room! Oh, and another thing, don't speak directly into the mic. Have the mic at the side of your mouth. If you talk into the mic, you can get the- You get the- you get the- you get the- you get the- noise, you know? It's really noise. Sound complements the visuals of a film, but if the visuals are bad, the sounds can sometimes redeem it. And if the sounds suck, then the visuals can barely redeem it. No clue why that is. But anyway, if you have both good visuals and sound, you get a frickin' masterpiece. Now where do you get good sounds? How come people keep asking me where I get my sounds? Simply record your own! I'm not talking like slapping your arm for a punch sound, but record sounds from computer games. Most video games have sound options to lower the music or background noise. And you can record them using stereo mix. How do I stereo mix? Are you fucking dumb? Easy. Just open your favorite sound recording program, preferably Audacity, and on the top toolbar you'll see a cute little microphone. Then to the right of that is the input source. Drop down the menu, select Stereo Mix. This is only on Windows XP. So once you get Stereo Mix ready to record, press the record button, go to the game you want to record sounds from, and play. Like if you want gun sounds, hop into a quiet area of the game and fire your guns and shit. Then when you're done, go back to Audacity, stop the recording, cut out the gun sound you want, and save it. Boom, instant sounds. Another alternative is Googling how to extract sounds from blah. You'll probably find a program that extracts the raw sounds from the game, saving time. A good program is Dragon or Packer. It works with most games, you just have to try and see. I know it works for Unreal Tournament, Max Payne, Chronicles of Vin Diesel, and some others. Explore a bit, you lazy ass. <laughs> so, once you got your script and sound effects and possible voice acting and everything else that you need before you start recording, now you get to record! Whoa! Personally, I like to use fraps to record, but there are many alternatives, such as a Wii game and uh, other, other stuff. Now hop into Gmod and get the map that you think will fit your scene best, and then set up your scene. Remember, never rush in this part or any part in video making. Take your time posing your characters and placing the necessary props. Console commands can help you here too, which you can do by pausing the game, going to Options, Keyboard, and then Advanced, and making sure Enable Developer Console is checked. A helpful command is CL Draw HUD 0, which hides the HUD, like your health and ammo and whatnot. I recommend binding this to a key, and you can do this by typing Bind, the key you want, CL Draw HUD 0. If you want the HUD back, simply replace the 0 with a 1. Now it's time to place your camera. Camera angles play a keynote in videos. If you have bad camera angles, chances are you get a bad film. Each camera angle should show what you want to happen in a certain take. Once you get better, you can stylize each shot. Remember to emphasize on important things, too. Add interest to each camera shot. Watch movies to get some ideas. Now that you got it all set up, let's go to some lip sync. This is only if you want these assholes to talk. Since you should have recorded your voice acting before filming, open up the file and listen to it. This helps you plan on adding emphasis at certain times in the dialogue, depending on how the actor sounds. It's helpful to have the script open in another window, and having the character's mouth sound out each word. Let's say we want this bitch ass to say, I appreciate Jesus. When capturing faces, use snapshots. So the first face would be the I sound, so move his mouth to make it look like he's saying I. If this confuses you too much, look in the mirror and sound out the words. Pay attention to your mouth movement. Also, depending on the mood of the character, change his eyebrows. Like if he's sad, tilt his eyebrows up. And if he's mad, tilt them down. And I'm sure you can figure out the rest of human expressions. Also, 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 also. When recording footage, I recommend pressing the context menu key. The default key is C. Go to drawing. Make sure that Fizzgun grab halo and Fizzgun beams are off, or else you will have really freaking annoying laser beam controlling everything. Let's go on to the best part in every film. Animation. Animation isn't simply recording some ragdoll horribly trying to do a complex action. Animation is the illusion of movement. What it will look like in post-production, the editing stage. A guy running up to another guy and punching him in the face can be broken out into multiple short video clips mashed together to make it look seamless. Take any Gmod video or animation, and play it frame by frame. See how each little clip transitions to the next? And when viewed in real time, it looks all fluid, but while filming in general, always. Q. 
keep the final product in mind and what it will look like in the end. Don't blindly jump into things. Now there's a little trick I like to share with you guys. Let's say you want a bunch of jackasses standing around and you want another jackass to fly and smack into them, knocking them all over. One way is to pose the jackasses getting hit beforehand and weld each body part to the ground, but make sure to make the weld breakable. Set the force limit to like 800 or something, depending on how heavy he or she is. The higher the number, the more force will be needed to knock them down. There's some mistakes with this method, as all the jackasses might not fall down when you throw the other jackass into them. So that's where Fizz Timescale comes in. Set up the scene with a camera, pulls all the guys but don't weld them, and record the guy flying toward the jackasses. But as soon as he makes contact, pause the game. Stop recording. I'll go into the console and type fizz underscore timescale space zero. Unpause. Everything physical is frozen, except you. Now go to where all the jackasses are and unfreeze them all. Get out of the scene, if necessary, then hit record, pause, go back to the console, and type fizz underscore timescale one, and unpause. Everybody falls over. Amazing, isn't it? Editing is the best part in every video. It's when all the magic happens. Once you have all the clips recorded, it's time to jump into your video editing program. If you lack one, get one! Although Windows Movie Maker is good for the most basic of basic videos, I recommend a more advanced program such as Sony Vegas or Adobe Premiere. They all have trials, so check them out before you buy them. If you can't buy them, get a job. Learn the fundamentals of the program before you jump into editing. The first thing you must add are the clips. Depending on how you want it to look, you can speed it up, slow it down, split it into two, whatever you want to do. Dang, that runs. Once you get the scene set up, it's nice to put the music you want in first. If it doesn't need music, don't put it in. That's for you to decide. Once it looks fine and dandy, put your sound effects in. Do not use stock source sounds. They are horrible. Get cool footstep sounds from like Battlefield or something, I don't know. Or if you want it to sound goofy, go grab some cartoon sounds from the internet. Now he halts and winds up the punch. And at this point, you would add some kind of whoosh as he slams his face into this piece of shit. Now add the punch noise. To add more boom to the punch, add other sounds on other layers, like another punch sound or a bone cracking noise. Make it sound exaggerated and booming. Also, to add a better effect, shake the clip a little with using the event panner tool thing. Add a keyframe, offset the scene, slash zoom in a little to prevent clipping on the edges. Next keyframe, put another position. Next keyframe, different position. You get the idea. Depending on how hard you want the punch to appear, make it shake more. You can do it. I know you can. You can do it. You can do it. You can do it. No, green screen effect. Yeah. Let's talk about green screen. I'm going over this in Sony Vegas, so if you use another program, good luck with that. Green screen is vital to creating complex scenes with a lot of crap happening. So I recommend grabbing a green screen map or green screen props from Cathars, Cathars, Cathars model pack on Gary'sMod.org. Now let's say we want some guy flying around like Superman. Put the guy on the green screen. Place the camera so all you see is green and the guy, of course, in the position you want him to fly in. Take a snapshot, or if you want to animate him, be my guest. Now record the background. Let's say we have him um, flying towards you. Record a clip of you moving back fast in the map you want him to fly in. Now let's put the two clips in editing. Place the flying guy over the background clip. Now add a chroma key or effect to the guy. And select the green with the eyedropper tool. Mess with the sliders on the side so you don't see any green, or as little green as possible around his edges. Cookie cutter is also useful. It can let you have a guy talking while his body moves at the same time. Simply place the body moving clip over his snapshot of faces. Select the side oval shape and place it carefully over his face. Make sure you select cut selection too. Now his body moves while he talks about how much he appreciates PINGERS! Okay, time for the final touches. Goopy shit. Goopy. Yeah. Alright! So you're finally done with this crap you call art. But what format should you export it in? What kind of file does YouTube like? Well, the type I use, which isn't the only kind to use, 
is .wmv. I use this because it doesn't create a file size too big and still retains exceptional quality. Hey, me, Gary, my video about myself, asshole. Time to wait to finish project. And sadly, this is where the video ends. I hope you learned at least something about making Gary's Mod videos. If you did not, however, my sincerest apologies. Now go make me proud. <laughs> I grew up so fast. <laughs>